Welcome back, everybody. It was a very big weekend. A lot of scores happened. Unfortunately, a lot of injuries happened that we will break down and talk about those futures. The studs, the duds. Make sure you stick around for the end of the show. Subscribe to this channel and enjoy. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Welcome in, one and all. This is how we're starting the week. A moment of silence, if you will, for the injuries, Mike. Uh, sure. <laughs> my my heart stopped beating there for a moment. You thought there was a technical difficulty of some I, sort. I did. I, what are we? What are we started the show over? No. We're just, we're starting off on a hot note. Yeah, my voice is questionable today. <laughs> I woke up and I had a conversation with my son, and part of that conversation sounded like I was the gingerbread man from Shrek. Oh, okay. And I realized that uh, look, there are there were some risks, <laughs> and we had a lot of injuries this week, including your, including your my voice. apparently my voice. But uh, we're here. Jason hasn't said a word yet. Yeah, I. I uh, <laughs> it, it's just rough. Sometimes fantasy is just rough. Yeah. You have all the injuries this weekend. You have just the, I mean, you don't even need the injuries. Like, l let me have my emotional hardships with just, like, l losing, you know, and, and fantasy, right, right. outscoring people and losing somehow. Um, but then you pile on the injuries, and sometimes, you know, sometimes it just sucks. Yeah, we're in a two-flex league, our league of record. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so you had to pick a couple guys to put in there. Yeah, you know, like uh well, did you I mean how much of a choice did you really have? I I had one choice to make. Yeah, you <laughs> I'm looking at your bench. You you had no choice. I had Damian Harris. Well, I you mean, had no choice. I, I questioned whether I should put him in like that was a legit question. So you played Romeo Dobbs and Michael Gallup. I did in my in, double Or flex. or you didn't play him. No one knows the difference. Yeah. In premier matchups. No, you you th th Jason, the process was sound. Trust in that. And the outcome was not. No. Well, my team still was good. Well, some of your team was good. Those two guys were really bad. Score more than Andy. He won. <laughs> I hate fancy football. Which is what you tweeted. Oh, yes. I, yes, I did. But we did have – we had lots of injuries. We had uh, unexpected performances. And that goes for, like, the teams winning ball games. Like, there was a point on this Sunday where I think it was Detroit – six Dallas three or vice versa and then Tampa was starting to get behind against Carolina and it's like what do we know yeah. this is why Vegas wins and that's why they have those big buildings the Panthers traded away their best player and then beat the tarnation <laughs> out of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers I mean we were talking before the show about you know the the number 12s right Tom Brady Aaron Rodgers who uh Al Borland Doing yes, good sir. on the on the Packer front. How are things in Green Bay? <laughs> They're not good, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know that city, and uh, I know what they're talking about in every store today. Jeez, they're not. And they're just... There's silence. They're the, just, the what is going on? And it doesn't help that Aaron Rodgers is like, a couple of weeks ago, ah, we'll see if I retire or not after the year. That's oh, the light. That's the, uh, the team commitment you want to hear? Mid-season? Retire? <laughs> With, with, it's like, Him and Brady. He just, might be mid-play retired. He's just like, eh. I mean, Brady <laughs> did throw a perfect – like, if oh, Mike yeah. Evans and the Romeo Dobbs drops happen on the same moment, maybe they walk away together. Yeah. Rip their shirts off, go out A-B <laughs> style. It's a good suggestion now. <laughs> uh, it was wild. And as per usual, we react with uh, the only way we know how. With puns. With puns. <laughs> Sophisticated ones at that. Of course. Let's begin with the uh, one of the stars of the weekend, Kenneth Walker, Texas Ranger. Yeah. Yes, Kenneth Runner. Oh. oh, he was running. Mark. Oh, come on, Mark Scamdrews. Yes, and Mark Blandrews. Just uh, what half a point? I'll take this one, guys. Romeo drops. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's he true. 
He dropped so many passes. Uh, Kenyon fake. Oh, big time. A pump fake. Yes. Austin Reckler. Oh, I'm gonna wreck it. Oh, Lamar Jack squat. <laughs> All aboard. Choo choo, Smith Schuster. I like that. Leonard Bournette. Yes. And Travis Etienne zone. <laughs> Boy, he was good. Uh, Josh Slay Cubs. All right. Okay, that was that was therapeutic. That felt good. That, that that was cathartic. I feel much much better now. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah, and you could still win this week. Stop it. No, he can't. Stop. He it. doesn't need the hope. I no. don't need the no. hope. On to next week. Twitter at the FF Ballers. If you want to follow the show, join the dot com is our community. And uh, unfortunately, we have a a gauntlet of news to talk about. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Someone give the cart drivers a raise. Because <laughs> they needed them yeah. this week. And they, this is the hardest part of fantasy football. Because your process, you know, you talked about it with the players that disappointed you this week. The process for drafting certain players getting to watch them perform and then getting them removed from the fantasy e ecosphere is disappointing. Brees Hall. Oh, man. Jason, let's get you right back down to the bottom of the yeah, pit yeah. after you were I was feeling better, yeah. and then you said those two words, Brees Hall, and now I'm crushed again. My, uh, I thought you would. I thought this was going to be party lights today. Because Brees Hall, uh, he took, you know, playing Denver, a good, stout defense, took that pitch Six, off left. 60-plus yard touchdown because he's awesome. Beast Hall on that yeah. run. And uh, and unfortunately, his season is over. Yeah, the, uh, the Jets have not confirmed it yet, but their head coach said that they believe it's an ACL injury. So not only do we lose the magic of Javante this year, but now it looks like Brees Hall is going to go down, and Michael Carter is going to be a conversation point tomorrow. Th those were my two. Those <laughs> Javante was my MVP, and Brees Hall was my breakout. And um, darn it, yeah, <laughs> you stupid injuries. Uh, also, good luck, New York. Yeah, because you're about to play the Patriots, the Bills, and the Patriots. Oh, with uh, with uh, your quarterback averaging 115 or so passing yards the past couple weeks. Yeah, and maybe without Corey Davis, who sprained his MCL, right. and already with question marks around Elijah Moore, who maybe they persuade <laughs> oh, dude, to. Elijah Moore is going to be walking into that building tomorrow, just like, oh, look who it is! You maybe your best wide receiver. Probably. DK Metcalf was ruled out early on Sunday, knee injury, carted off, X-rays negative. I don't think they. Thought he broke his kneecap, so maybe uh, an MRI is necessary yeah, here. Yes. But he was smiling on the cart. Does that count for something? Uh, yeah, it counts for, you know, his emotional health. Yeah. But this could be bad, and Tyler Lockett didn't do anything. Marquise Goodwin was the shock of the day. Multiple Great touchdowns. Win. That's right. I forgot. <laughs> That's going back in oh, time. Oh, man. Marquise. Marquise Great one. It's circa 2017. Yeah. And he got to hit us with that. That the TD celebration, the uh, the, the, the long, long jump. jump, yeah. Oh man, it's so good, it's so good. Always better when an Olympian's catching touchdowns. Yeah. This one really hurt because unlike Brees Hall, who had a monster day before the injury, Amon Ross St. Brown concussion. One of the reasons I won, Jason. I faced Amon Ross St. Brown. Yeah, he did not return. I faced Patrick Mahomes. Oh, yeah. I think it was. It was, it was first catch two for St. Brown. He was one for four. Yeah, and, and and honestly, that had a I think that had a ripple effect on so many fantasy assets in this whole game. For sure. Uh, the fact that the Detroit Lions didn't have Amon Ra and didn't have – they, they didn't plan for not having Amon Ra. They thought they were going to have him, so he was on a, an unexpected loss. You obviously were without Swift and against a good defense, so you couldn't score. Obviously, they spent the whole game not scoring, and – because of that, you didn't have to do much on the other side of the ball. Uh, you didn't have to throw as much. So th that that game that should have been exciting, I wonder how different it would have been if Amon Ra was on the field the entire the entire game. Big Mike Williams, ankle injury in the fourth quarter, told the Athletic that he has an ankle sprain. Keenan Allen did not play in the second half. He was active, 
wink, wink. I watched him catch a uh, a short pass for a first down around the goal line. And I was like, cool, he, he caught the ball. But I was like, that didn't look right. Like, he just didn't. He yeah. wasn't quick in and out. of Like, everything about Keenan Allen is, you know, quick twitch and getting in and out of cuts. And it's, you know, he probably took himself out as a precaution. Yeah, I, I think I thought I saw a quote saying that like this was the plan is he's just going to get a limited reps in and then be done. I see. I mean, look, I flashbacks. I've been here with Keenan now. There was I mean, I know it's, it's very hindsight now, but if I, there was no way I was playing Keenan Allen with that nonsense. Uh, because I've been emotionally scarred they're by on the before. Bye. They're on the bye, Jason. Rest Ke up, Keenan. Mike can get well. Yeah, uh, ho hope hopefully Mike Williams is okay. That it looked Awful. I thought his I thought it was leg, broken. <clears throat> I thought it was just like I didn't know you could twist your leg that yeah. many times and have. Just I didn't an, see the play. Oh, oh thank it's, goodness! It's his, his congratulations. Grotesque. Yeah, it, it was his leg gets planted. It's like the, the defender's kind of falling on it. He falls down and it just it twists. It looked like it looked exactly like uh, whenever we see a, a like guy's Dak. Yeah, whenever we see the guy's ankle twist and snap, that's what it looked like. So the fact that he has an ankle sprain, that is. I mean, best case scenario, it seems like. Russell Wilson trending to be able to play next week in London. Hooray. Zeke. <laughs> take, take this, England. <laughs> here, here comes Russell Wilson. Get your tickets. Oh, it's gonna man. going to be dangerous. <laughs> take that, England. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, the feature there in the I Jags matchup. I suppose. Why do Why does Jacksonville always go to London? Is it because, because they're they, close? Because they're close. Yeah. Uh, they're one. They're close, and two, they want to move the franchise there. I see. Uh, I genuinely think that Jacksonville wants to relocate to London. Do they rename the team then? Well, it wouldn't be the Jacksonville Jaguars it's, anymore. It's the Jaguars. Well, I do, I don't mean that it wouldn't change the city part of the name, Jason. <laughs> and I, I'm not an imbecile. <laughs> I don't know. Are there Jaguars in? I don't think so. All right, <laughs> Cardinals out here. I That's mean, no true. one cares. Uh, all right, we're moving on. Zeke, knee contusion is what he believes he has. It was it was a nasty hit. Thank goodness his leg was not planted. Because if if that leg was planted and took that hit, that was that'd be ACL. It'd be done. Uh, it looked like it got hyperextended. He did come back into the game, scored, and then twice. Yeah, and. The, the battle plan <laughs> works to a T, which, I mean, thanks to uh, all the Dallas receivers and everybody going down at, like, the one-yard line, helping our, our dude Zeke out. But we need more testing on this. He, again, he came back in the game, but that doesn't mean that yeah, he's like okay. Taking a baseball bat to the knee yeah. is what it, it was, looked like. It was brutal. Well, and he uh, they have a bye in week nine, so next week they could uh, maybe give more work to Tony Pollard. Alan Lazard, shoulder injury, left the game. So the one player that maybe Aaron yes. Rodgers could count on. I mean, he, he did make an incredible throw to Aaron Jones, another player he can count on. Yes, the touchdown? Yes, one of Aaron Jones' two touchdowns. Mm -hmm. So trade him now. <laughs> yeah. just I just keep getting him they, and then trade him after the baby, boost game. They, they seem like they are just done with A.J. Dillon. Uh, r yeah, Ryan Tan – well, it, it's – we should talk about that. When do we talk about it? In the studs section? Yeah, let's do it there. Sure. Ryan Tannehill – Right ankle injury came back into the game. We'll see if he plays. I'm betting he will. Uh, yeah, the theme, Brooks, it does seem to be more testing needed. David Njoku, walking boot and crutches after the game. Says it isn't serious. We'll find out. Daniel Bellinger's injury. <laughs> I, just, I get it. I like the optimism here from, from Njoku. But like you're, in, you're on crutches in a walking boot. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't even worry about this. Precautionary. This, this little thing, I won't worry about that. It's a flesh wound. Yeah. Daniel Bellinger had a nasty injury. Yeah. And I think he ended up in the hospital. He did. So uh, poked in the eye that the hand of a defender went straight into the Oof. face mask. <laughs> He'll probably be wearing a visor. Uh, Chuba Hubbard didn't finish the game. Minor sprain of his ankle. He had a big game. Russell Cage, hamstring injury. Mike Boone exited early. Tonight, we got Damian Harris returning from injury to try to balance the world a little bit. Yeah, and Mac Jones. And Mac Jones. So most, uh, most quarterbacks would have missed two to three more weeks. That's what I've heard. <laughs> All right. That was today's news and notes brought to you by USAA insurance. Learn more at USAA.com slash insurance. This week's fantasy stud muffins. Joseph Burrow. Hello. 
34 for 42, 481 and three. He had 345 passing yards in the first half. What kills me is that I tried really, really hard to trade for him two weeks ago. Back when he wasn't doing this. And I couldn't get it done. And now I won't be able to get it done because oh, yeah. Burrow is just set up. They're passing the ball so much. And that that's the thing. That's why it's not going to go away. At the end of last year, the very end of last year, you saw them kind of release Joe Burrow. It worked great. I mean, he won so many people fantasy championships. But over the course of the season, they just were such a run-heavy team. And then you start this season, and it's the more of the same, you know, like – uh, the, just run, run, run the ball, and they have completely switched. The last month, they are number one in neutral pass rate. They're putting them back in shotgun and saying, go to town. And so I don't think it's going to change. Joe Burrow is going to win people championships. The worst part about this game was that they won 35-17, to 17 and the other side of the football, Marcus Mariota threw the ball 13 times. Joe Burrow threw it 42 in a win. Mariota threw it 13 times after 14 last week. There is no such thing <laughs> as a, a, a game script. There, it, that doesn't. It, there's not parts of a game. Like, he doesn't go in and say, okay, well, here, here's our package if we're down. Here's our package if we're up. No, this Arthur is the Smith goldfish goes, situation. He doesn't remember what happened, the score, <laughs> nothing. He's no. pure goldfish. He just says, what, what play do I want to run? And I emphasize the run. run. Yes. It's an embarrassment. But, Kyle, any thoughts on your on your team? I'm right there with you. I hate it so much. <laughs> he completed eight passes. Good luck distributing eight passes to your entire receiving core. Daniel Jones, 19 for 30. Dude. He's the quarterback, 10 on the year. The big number here was 11 for 107 on the ground and a rushing touchdown. Plays Seattle next week. He's. It's interesting. It's up in Seattle. Daniel Jones, this was his biggest game of the year. Uh, you know, he's in streaming consideration. You know, Herbert's on by next week. I believe Patrick Mahomes is on by next week. Whenever you have a quarterback that's running, as as well as Daniel Jones has been running, they have to be in consideration just, for a streaming. It's just nerve-wracking. It's nerve-wracking because there's no weapons for him to throw the ball to, and they're not a great offense. But, I mean, he, he you know, Daniel Jones has his entire career had – so many spike fantasy games. You know that his, like his floor is super low. He could go out there and throw, you know, turn the ball over four times with a couple uh, fumbles and score you two points. I mean, his but previous he, two weeks were thirteen and twelve fantasy points. Exactly, yeah. but his ceilings have always been monstrous. Yep, he's had that he's chance. Not he's playing very well. I mean, like he's not. This was the fantasy output, but I'm saying NFL wise. He's completing 67% of his passes. He has two interceptions on the year, two fumbles. Like I think he's this found, is a very different Daniel Jones. I think he's found they they found the right place for him. They don't put too much on his shoulders. Having Saquon is a huge difference maker for this roster. The defense is good. You know, when they're getting boat raced and you tell Daniel Jones go win you the game, he can't do it. This could be really bad news for the Giants. Like <laughs> They didn't pick up his fifth year option. Right. Yeah, yeah. And they're going to win a bunch of games. They're not going to have good, you know, draft capital next year. They're already sitting at 6 and 1. What do you do? Do you re-sign <laughs> Daniel Jones? Like you don't want to do that. Yeah, I don't but know. But you're we'll winning see. with them, so it's like a really bad situation. I don't know. Patrick Mahomes, huge week, 423 and 3. It just keeps going. They're in San Francisco. It didn't matter. And San Francisco's defense was Pretty much full strength. They got Bosa back. They got a bunch of their players back that I I thought they weren't going to have. Mike was right on that. And um, whew, now they know. go into the bye after a dominating win. They scored the most points of any team on the week against San Francisco. That's crazy because their their defense is really good and they were on the road. Hmm. Patrick Mahomes, he's good at football. Mm -hmm. Uh, Trevor Lawrence scored on the ground again. Uh. Yeah, Davis Mills will we'll mention because Mike's yeah, baby. stream of the week, 302 and 2. That's a good stream. That's great. You're looking for 202 on a stream. Just don't lose you the week. And he, he helped you out. And then Justin Herbert somehow managed to throw for two touchdowns and 293 yards, 51 pass attempts. I looked this up this morning. Herbert has thrown the ball more than double Marcus Mariota on the year. So 300 
something attempts and Mariota's got 150. So it's like uh, hmm. twice the amount of games played. Uh, all right. It was looking bad for him, though. He garbage timed at the very end. But losing Mike Williams, not having Keenan Allen, not yes. having Jalen Guyton. I mean, it was like... It's my time to shine, guys. I know. Jason you, Moore was out there. Yeah! You caught a ball. I sure did. It's it, He is actually somebody that's interesting moving forward where it's like you can't take all of the weapons away and still produce. Austin Eckler will have 36 receptions. Oh, my gosh. Eckler week. is a lock for like RB1 rest of the season. Um, running backs, we'll get to in just a minute. All right, into the running back studs we go. I feel like I should just give the microphone over to Judge Giamatti. For the Josh Jacobs I mean, victory lap? Josh Jacobs is having a career year, Brooksy. Yeah, I can't say I expected this. But, but you, you should but have. You, you, you should have said that you expected this. <laughs> no, you know what? You, you, you get the credit because you stood up when no one asked you to. We were talking... And we were talking poorly against him, and you know, Zamir White and, and Brandon and, Bolden. Yeah, I remember he's playing deep Amir, into the Amir Abdullah, yeah, the, the, the preseason Hall of Fame game, and all this. And the entire world, including at that point, it seemed the Raiders were against Josh Jacobs. And Brooks chimes in; he is a believer in Josh Jacobs. And well, now he's the RB four in the year. Round of applause for Brooks. Good work, Brooksy. I knew it all along, guys. <laughs> there there it is. His last three games. Yeah. Is it's basically the Jonathan Taylor experience. One forty four and two, one fifty four and one, one forty three and three from last year in that stretch for Jonathan Taylor. That's what you're getting with Jacobs. It was week three of the fantasy season was the last time that uh, jo Josh Jacobs was not a top three running back. I mean, he's and uh, it's working. It's working. He's he's looking great. He is. Um, he wants a contract. He gonna and get he, it. He's playing like this. He's gonna get one. Uh, Austin Eckler, just not, not nine for thirty one on the ground. Yeah, that's what I love. He he had nine carries, didn't get to double digit carries, thirty one yards. They were down great what? fantasy outcome. Yeah, twelve for ninety six through the air and a touchdown, uh, two touchdowns in the game. They were down seventeen nothing in like a blink. He's on pace for 129 receptions. <laughs> All right. Just, that's stupid. Just enjoy it. And it's hard to even count on Keenan Allen being back and healthy yet. I mean, you just – you hope that managing his hamstring gets him back, but they go into the bye. Kenneth Walker. Dude. 23 for 168 and two, and in back-to-back -back weeks have, has shown the ability to house it. Yes. That's the the huge thing for Kenneth Walker, like for Brees Hall, where you knew they were if, once they were getting the work, like well, there's guys who can just grind it out, you know. Like if Clyde gets a whole bunch of work for Kansas City, you're like yeah, sweet, give me you know four yards, three to four yards of carry. But Kenneth Walker, at any given moment, anywhere on this football field, can rip it and take it to the house, and he looks so freaking fantastic. He's just breaking. Tackles all over the place. He's incredible. you're talking about for the division leading. Yeah, Seattle Seahawks. Yep, Looking four good. touchdowns in his last three games, and I don't think it's going to go away anytime soon. He's a true stud running back. And the narrative in the pre-draft time was like, well, Kenneth Walker's a really good player, high draft capital. If anything happens to Rashad Penny, watch out. Yep. And uh, unfortunately for Rashad Penny, that came true. Mike, that was your start of the week, Kenneth Walker. Aaron Jones, 10 targets, 9 for 53, 2 touchdowns. Go. And uh, A.J. Dillon only got 4 rushing attempts, no targets, 16 total snaps. I think literally on this show last week, we were like, like Aaron Jones is so much better. Yes. So why force it? And, and they were obviously listening to the Fantasy <laughs> Footballers podcast. Yep. And they just made a decision this week not to force it to A.J. Dillon. Yeah. And, and, and it led to a loss. <laughs> I mean, the the Packers are broken and the Buccaneers are broken right now. So it's nice to have an asset like Aaron Jones, especially when you're able to predict it and see it coming and call your, your shot and plug him in there. But there are real big problems here. I mean, I 
the offense as a whole is not going to score a lot. That's what it seems like. So A.J. Dillon is just an insurance back that you're not cutting, but you can't play him or start him until an Aaron Jones injury happens, which usually Aaron Jones misses a couple games. But outside of that... Yeah, you want these guys against Buffalo next week? Trade high on Aaron Jones right now on the big game. And uh, talk to the person you're trading with about the fact A.J. Dillon had four carries. <laughs> But they play Buffalo yeah. next week. I mean, I, Aaron Jones is a good, usable asset for the rest of the year. It's just what you get back might be better than what you get from him. Uh, it's it's wild. They only had they had twelve carries on the ground for under forty yards between the two guys. So the running game not working. We know Eno had a big game on Thursday night football. It was nice to see. We'll see if Connor comes back. Here's a player I want to talk about: Raheem Moster. Whoo, baby. For multiple reasons. One, this is the uh, second time in three weeks that he's been around the 20-point mark in fantasy leagues. 16 for 79 against Pittsburgh on the ground, but he also was involved in the passing game. Five targets, four for 30 and a touchdown. Almost had a second touchdown uh, on their second drive. Here's the, the matchups for Raheem Mostert the next three weeks. Detroit. One of the best uh, matchups for a running back. Sh uh, Chicago. One of the best uh, matchups for a running back. Okay. And then that, that after that, it's Cleveland. The Ooh. best matchup for a running back. <laughs> so Raheem Moster could very well be a difference maker for the next three weeks. And he was the number six running back on the week. Obviously, we have tonight's game. Raheem but Moster. Coming he, out of the bye, they got Houston. He burns bright. You you just you, you grab him and you play him until the candle goes out. And until yeah. it does, <laughs> it's going to be great. Yep. So if you let, let's put it this way, I am a Raheem Mostert manager. Mm -hmm. Chase Edmonds is is as done as done can get. Mm -hmm. Do you recommend to me that I go try to pick him up on the cheap to ensure my Mostert situation, or is it just if just let the candle burn out and move on to somebody else? I th I think if you've got a bench spot for him, if Mostert were to go down to injury, then I think Chase Edmonds is going to be valuable. The 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 running back role here has been valuable. It just hasn't been. Chase Edmonds has been Raheem Mostert, and Mostert looks far better than than Chase Edmonds does on the field. But we've already seen Chase Edmonds score touchdowns around the goal line and and have his relevance, even though it was hard to predict uh, for fantasy. So if Mostert went down, yeah, I, I would certainly there'd be a mad dash for Chase Edmonds on the waiver wire. You think? Oh yeah. Oh, you're saying if Mostert went down? Well, yeah. yes, okay. yes. I yes. thought you meant if he hit the waiver wire today. Like, no. Okay. Uh, Gus Edwards. Yeah, baby. 16 for 66, two touchdowns, and was the guy. Yes, he is. He was the guy. Kenyon Drake was uh, terrible. 11 carries for five yards. And a this is a thing about fantasy football is you got to be paying attention <clears throat> literally until the ball is kicked off. This was – everything was trending in the right direction for Gus Edwards. That's why he has been a, a stash for the last couple weeks – Things escalated very quickly after the J.K. Dobbins news where J.K. Dobbins is going to miss. He's on IR. He'll miss multiple weeks. Won't surprise me if J.K. Dobbins is shut down. And the, meanwhile, here's Gus Edwards just sitting there on the waiver wire and people are not picking him up. So I was just I was begging people on Sunday Live, pick him up. But at that time, it was, you know, Kenyon Drake is still going to be the starter. Gus Edwards is just back off of his injury. We don't. At this, with, with the information I have right now, I guess I'm playing Kenyon Drake. And then the moment Sunday Live is over, a tweet goes comes out from Baltimore from a beat reporter saying Gus Edwards is running with the ones during warmups. And it was okay, abandon the Kenyon Drake plan. Mm -hmm. You gotta get Gus Edwards in. And it's it's some steel underpants, but he's gonna be the guy. And now moving forward, like Gus Edwards looked great. This was his first game back from his injury, which uh, I was talking to Betts earlier, our injury guy. It turned out Gus Edwards' injury was far more like J.K. Dobbins than than a, a simple, clean ACL tear. But Edwards was given the proper amount of time to heal up. Like Remember, J.K. Dobbins, with the, the catastrophic injury, was forcing his way back onto the field in training camp. Meanwhile, Gus Edwards here, we're in week seven, and he took all the time to heal up, but he is going to be Good to go, and touchdowns will either go to Lamar or they will go to Gus. Edwards. Nobody wants to use Kenyon Drake. Yeah, it's correct. It, you you do it's it out. on a, you do it because you're forced to. 
Yeah. Um, Gus Edwards, 16 carries, only played 23 snaps. He, he was on the field 36% of the snaps. So there is room to go north yes. here. When he was on the field, it was to give him the ball. This was a weird game. Yeah. Most Raven games are this year. Yeah. I, Mark Andrews was not involved at all in this yeah. game. And Lamar, it's been, it's been a bad run for Lamar. It, it was a weird yes, one. Yes, it, it has been very tough. The Andrews thing, you have to hope it was just he was on the injury report, missing practices, wasn't as healthy as they would hope, and that next week will be more healed up. Travis Etienne Jr., oh, man. 14 for 114, uh, five targets. And they kept using him after the fumble. Right. He had a... A really cool run where it looked like he was going to break towards the end zone. And then, whoops, another fumble, which he's had several of this year. Zero touches for James Robinson. Yeah. If you were part of the faithful for Travis Etienne, congratulations because it's about to pay off. It, like Etienne, the, this is now, I don't know how many weeks in a row, if he just has the huge 30 play, plus, He has a huge play. He has a huge play every week, and he – he may have retired James Robinson last week. I am old enough to remember <laughs> when we thought that players had overcome the Achilles. Yeah. I, I remember. Yep. I, we thought, oh, they've done it. This is the year. Is it's, it all of them now? It's all of them. Cam Akers, James Robinson, Sterling, Sterling Shepard. Shepard. Yep. There's one man out there dominating with his recovered Achilles. Deonta Foreman. Deonta Foreman. But that's because it's been what, like three, five? four, five years since the injury. Like I you just want to give credit. Yeah. yeah. Somebody's holding the candle for defeating the Achilles. Zeke, Jason, start of the week. Two touchdowns. The battle plan, baby. I mean, 15 for 57. Tony Pollard is really good, and they, they kept him in around the goal line. He couldn't get in, though. And, and uh, Zeke did. He almost got... Three of them. Yeah, they they ran um, as look as as the uh, the person who wrote up the battle plan. I was very invested in Elliot getting goal line carries, and they have this formation that they ran and they ran it ex each time they got to the goal line. The look was exactly the same, but the third one they did the play action and had the wide open. I don't remember who cut the it was the, uh, the the was it a Turd Ferguson back there? It was. It was Turd Ferguson, <laughs> not not. Uh, Dalton Schultz was giving him dap, but it was another uh, white tight end. Hendershot. Yeah. Hendershot. Okay, Smythe. that's Smythe. Yeah. yeah, we call them Smythe. <laughs> uh, wide receiver studs. Jamar Chase did it again. Eight for one, thirty and two. He had an injury in the first into the first half that I thought for sure we wouldn't see him again. Totally fine. Went back out there. Tyler Boyd. Eight for one fifty five and one. Tyler Boyd picks about four weeks a year yep. to do this. This was one. And if you had T Higgins uh, along with me, you were shouting at the television as there was a play where T. Higgins had a huge catch, dove to the end zone, looked very clearly like... Jason and I were talking about that. It looked to me like he got in. Yeah, but, Jason thought so. But he also then kind of fumbled the ball afterwards. So I get maybe the team was too scared of the fumble and they just they ran to the goal line and then got immediately stuffed and it turned into a Joe Burrow rushing touchdown. But it was like... Dude, just I, no. He's in. He's I, in. What are you? You're gonna. You're gonna fail. Yeah. Just challenge this. It's a free touchdown. I, I had the exact 100 percent say. We we weren't together watching this game, but I I saw the exact same thing you did, and you uh, made the same comment about being the, afraid of the fumble. <laughs> and then it was one of those. They ran the play so quick, yeah. and I'm like, why are you? Why? Oh, I know why. They're afraid that on review they're gonna find out that he fumbled and they lose the ball through the end zone or something. So they just ran the play, but. He probably did have a touchdown. Yes. This uh, this next player, you guys are going to laugh because I don't know if you noticed this, but uh, you know, I had to play him in Listener League. And Ooh. McCall Hardman. Oh, <laughs> oh did three, you really play three him? touchdowns oh, for baby. McCall? He was my Brandon Ayuk of last week. I played McCall Hardman because of bye weeks in Listener League, and he led yeah. me to victory with three touchdowns. I, I made a statement, you know, last week. Uh, we were talking about the Kansas City wide receivers, and I said, well, it turns out the answer was none of them. It turns out the answer was all of them because all three of them had excellent weeks. Well, Juju, we, two straight 100-yard games. MVS was over 100. Was he? Yes. 
We talked Mahomes about Mahomes is really good. <laughs> earlier or earlier this week, we talked about it. We said, how many touchdowns is, is Mahomes going to throw? Yeah. We said, probably three. It's got to go somewhere. So you, you can always play these guys. It's nice. Um, I, I should have let people know that I was playing against Juju Smith-Schuster so that mm. they would have had the confidence to put him in their lineup. You were facing Juju? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the Juju Mahomes stack. It was a pleasure. <laughs> oh, um, man, this guy. <laughs> this guy is dead. Last week, it was the Burrow uh, Chase? stack. Yeah, it's it just whatever. <laughs> I'll let you know who I'm playing this coming oh, week. Oh, man. Man. Uh, Marquis Goodwin scored twice. Yep. Looked pretty good. And uh, Mike Williams did go seven for 86 and a touchdown before the injury. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Mike, you yeah. get credit here. <laughs> yeah, you <baby>. get credit <laughs> because Andy and I were aghast at the thought of playing the awful tower, Paris Campbell. Wee oui, wee. Oui. And goodness gracious, the whole time we're watching this game, it's like everything was going to Paris Campbell. It was a disaster for the team itself. Right. But, but yeah. this is they, the team is a disaster. The offensive line is. And if Matt Ryan has to get rid of the ball immediately, that's Paris Campbell's specialty. Uh, I mean, this is he's heating up. I don't know if we're going to – we'll see if he gets on fire NBA Jam rules. But 12 targets, that is a delight. Yeah, yeah. Ten, 10 for 70 and a touchdown. There was a play where Jason and I were watching it. I wanted Taylor to get the ball. He wanted Michael Pittman to get the ball <laughs> on the goal line. And we're sitting there just like we're playing it all out. And who gets it? Yeah, baby. Freaking Paris Campbell. Yeah. I mean, you're right, though, because if he had 12 targets and Jonathan Taylor had his highest reception day of the year, that offensive line has given him no time. Yes, they, are, they have gone to the, the, the Steelers' Big Ben model which is snap, throw the ball. DJ Moore. Hey, what? All right. Yeah. 10 targets, 7 for 69, and a touchdown. Uh, look, I hope if you ran into a situation where you tied, then great news that DJ Moore was on your bench because that's, that's some good bench points. Ter I almost played him in DFS last week because his price was going down, and it seemed interesting. Without Christian McCaffrey, you knew that you know the targets should be higher for him. I mean, you're taking a massive amount of weekly targets away. They've got to go to someone. So DJ Moore, maybe you, maybe you keep looking his way. Maybe, probably not though. Uh, Terry McLaurin, five for seventy three and a touchdown. It was nice to see. He still was not the. I, I feel like the 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 plays that were scripted are still going to Curtis Samuel. A lot of manufactured touches, um, manufactured reads. Uh, Terry McLaurin just caught some of the deep targets. Which is something he does get chances to do with Heineke. Yep. Who do you like more then, McLaurin or DJ Moore as a, a weekly start? DJ Moore plays the Falcons. Yeah. Oh, man, that's gross. I think I lean DJ Moore now without Christian McCaffrey. DeAndre Hopkins, 14 targets. George Pickens looked Good. Yep. Six for 61 and a touchdown. Uh, Mike had tweeted they, they want to trade Claypool, but they want like uh, Christian McCaffrey <laughs> Hall for him. <laughs> yeah. They want multiple second day picks. What? I mean, uh, they're just, look, we've all done that. We've all asked for a trade. You're like, well, look, we, I've got this player. Why don't you give me all your picks? But it's, it's <laughs> I mean, it's the most ridiculous thing that I've heard in a long time because you're saying, oh, well, this player got all that. Yeah, that player's one of the best in the NFL. <laughs> There's a reason. Look at his contract. You're, like, not even giving this player a contract extension. But I want what he got. <laughs> yeah, they're not going to trade him if that's the asking I mean, if, price. It, like, that'd be like Taylor Heineke being in a contract negotiation and saying, well, did you see what Deshaun Watson got? <laughs> yeah, but what are you talking about? Yeah. You're Taylor Heineke. Uh, Travis Kelsey's still great. George Kittle, 6 for 98 and a touchdown. Did uh, did Deontay Johnson get injured? Uh, yeah, he did, and he came back in. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yes. Yeah. Deontay Johnson uh, hurt his arm. They took him off the field, came but, back into the but game. But Kenny Pickett loves Pickens, and he loves the Muth. Yeah, I mean, he uh, he tried his best. That's how I felt about Kenny Pickett <laughs> last night. He was It was close. It, it's amazing because the difference between being a good quarterback and a bad one is like, the ends of those drives for Kenny Pickett. Like you, he, he did lead him down the field, made a few good throws, escapability, bad interceptions. The mute did go eight for 75. Njoku was good. 
Everett was five for sixty three. Evan Ingram was four for sixty seven. Yeah, there it is. The, if you look, if you need four catches for fifty to sixty yards, Evan Ingram's your dude. I mean, guys, I need I need to be talked to. Okay, okay, we're I here. Need, I need you to convince me to like just get rid of Kyle Pitts. <laughs> Oh, that's easy. <laughs> because let me let me read you Kyle Pitts' stat lines in five of six games, okay? Oh. Two for 19, two for 19, one for 25, three for 19, three for nine. Yeah. Um, Cade Otten uh -huh. has the same amount of receptions as Kyle Pitts this year. Uh -huh. Will Disley has 15 more fantasy points than Kyle Pitts on the season. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you would think that that would yep. be persuasive enough. But, like, are you at the point – because like would you play Evan Ingram every week over Kyle Pitts? You should. I yeah, no, I wouldn't. Um and yes, you should, you should. for the baseline, but the 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 high end Is outcome, there any high end outcome with 13 pass attempts anymore? Well, I mean, he was 5 for 87 in week 3 Kyle Pitts. So uh, 87 yards is something I Who did um, he play that week? Uh, that was the Seattle Seahawks, yeah. who are uh, the worst of the worst. Uh, against the tight end. At, against he the did tight end. score this week, and they just didn't count it. That's true. That is true. But that did was also that play, a Mike? No, apparently I'm that no, was he, a, he scored, and then they just didn't count it. It was oh. a one-yard reception. No, I know. Right? I so know. They they basically threw it to him. He caught it across the goal line. There wasn't a good enough camera angle, and so they said he was short, like half mm. half an inch short. And it's whatever. so depressing. Do you like? Pain? 26 oh. yards. Do you want 26 no. yards? Because that number, remember when I said he had 87 yards once? Yeah. That's the only time he's been at 26 <laughs> yards or higher the whole season. I say that's pretty compelling. Yeah. He's He might be the most hurtful pick this last year oh, in yes. fantasy. Yeah. Because I mean, that was a third-round pick that you have – not just was a bust and you can move on, but that you keep playing every week because you have to. You shouldn't. You don't have to do this anymore. Thanks, guys. You're welcome. This is a good transition. Pooped in his big boy pants. But, but, but Jason. Oh. But Jason. <laughs> yes, voice of public opinion. Mark Andrews was worse than him this week. That's true. That's just look at only this week yes. and close your eyes. You should offer Kyle Pitts for Mark Andrews <laughs> and say <laughs> See, he I was better. That one through. Uh, well, we've got that that manager in the building here. Kyle Pitts is just twenty two, Al, and uh, his future is very bright. Mark Andrews zero for zero this past week could be very hurt. Thoughts. Straight up? I'm going to stick with Andrews. All right. No, oh, that's that's bold. But uh, I, I do have Pitts in Dynasty, and I'll stick with him, too. All right. Uh, Zach Ertz, Robert Tunyon, TJ Hawkinson, Mike Gesicki. Disappointments at the tight end position beyond Kyle Pitts. Uh, moving into the quarterback duds. The last four weeks for Lamar Jackson. Yeah. You know, you talk about being kind of. Not that you'd ever really want to sit Lamar Jackson, but you had back-to-back -back number one weeks in weeks two and three. But the last four weeks, 19, 15, 11, 21. Is, is this panic button time for Lamar? Uh, I have Lamar, and I was, I'm not hitting the panic button, no. But he's cost you. Yes. He, yeah, it's, it's, he's certainly underperforming. What, if, what uh, if Andrews did have an injury that was – let's say Andrews missed a few games. Would yeah. you would you be worried at that point yes. not having Mark Andrews? Yes. The when when Andrews missed the second day of practice, I thought, oh crap, because Lamar Lamar needs Mark Andrews to perform. Clearly, twenty uh, first, uh, he scored ten point seven fantasy points this week. Tampa Bay, New Orleans, and a bye week the next three weeks for Lamar. Joining him in the duds, Thomas Brady. Man. 49 pass attempts that resulted in zero touchdowns. Woof. I mean, 290 yards is not too bad. That's not too bad. Yeah, I mean, it. it something is... He should have had a touchdown. Mike Evans, goodness gracious. I worry about... So, we had the question posed because uh, after last week, we talked about how down NFL points were and how down fantasy points were from the last several years. And then one of the big 
reasons that uh, we gave was there's been, you know, some uh, like Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, Russell Wilson, the quarterbacks who are supposed to be running high powered offenses, uh, uh, Kyler, they have not been performing. And after that week, it was like, well, I'm still betting on a back to back MVP, Aaron Rodgers, to figure it out, the all time greatest Tom Brady to figure it out. Mm hmm. And it's like um, it's only one week, but I am now scared because both teams look shell shocked. They look like they don't know what to do to fix it. Tom Brady's been startable in two of seven weeks. It's rough. I mean, the for my act, my actionable advice for Tom Brady though is, I mean, if you want to bench him, uh, I would not drop him personally. It's been atrocious, but 49 attempts, 40, 52, 52, 42. Like, if you don't have a guy that's running all the time, I mean, you need to have huge volume uh, for, for your quarterback to be throwing the ball. So I would maybe look for for a different option for the next couple of weeks and see if Tom Brady can get it figured out, but I would not drop him. They were 13-point favorites, and they got smashed. Carolina got the, the, the trade bump. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I, and you have to wonder now, Todd Bowles is struggling again mm -hmm. as the head coach. And you thought he had everything in place. Let's see. What they've beaten uh, Atlanta, the Saints, and the Cowboys. They beat the Cowboys week one. Let's just heat check this or okay. ice check this. I don't know. Uh, you streaming Daniel Jones at Seattle or Tom Brady against Baltimore? I probably wouldn't have the I, guts to I go. Would, I'd probably Tom, play Brady. Tom I would Brady. put Brady in my lineup and hey, Coach might Todd Bowles. Uh, Rick Stroud tweeted, Coach Todd Bowles said the Bucks are in a, quote, dark place. Yeah, that's yeah. what it seems like. Yeah, no. It, and and that's what I'm saying about the Packers and, <laughs> and the Buccaneers. It Like, they're I, – I know this is uh, – you know, it's not measurable. It's a really, you know, narrative-y thing. But they look – shell shocked and lost like you could see it on the the faces of all the players they they are in a bad place it seems like for the Packers the Buccaneers and the Broncos if the game starts trending like the previous game it almost ends it mm -hmm. it's like they don't have a lot of room f for error <laughs> to start those games before that dark place starts to settle in and I feel like the Cardinals were like that a little bit too mm-hmm on the offensive side until uh, the bright light of Hopkins showed up. All right, running back duds. It came along with Tom Brady. This was the first really bad week for Leonard Fournette, eight for 19. He had been their offense. It was because he only had three targets. He, he hasn't been good, you know, on the ground all year, but he's been making up for it by being one of the target leaders of the team. Yeah, what, what good is a dump truck just driving around if it's got nothing to dump? Yeah. No, there was, uh, it's not trash day. Need oh. those dump offs. Rashad White, six for twenty four, two targets. So they split the work pretty much and yep. for no value. Kenyon Drake was eleven for five. Yeah, baby. <laughs> That's the Kenyon Drake we know and love. I gotta I gotta be honest, that feels good. I just I was jealous of the pe like I was not in on him. Then I was super jealous once that IR news of Dobbins and then Kenyon Drake, he just disappeared. Like, if you need someone to hang out with, A.J. Dillon, James Robinson, like, Kenyon Drake is free. Look, if you are still jealous, Kenyon Drake, I can I can tell you, he's going to hit the waiver wire in our league of records, so you can uh, okay. you can scoop him up. Yeah. You can get that experience if you want. Um, Isaiah Pacheco was named the starter. <laughs> <laughs> Wink. The mad dash on the waiver wire. I, I had uh, mentioned I had a big bid in for him. And I moved it down after thinking about it a little bit more, and, and I went, "So what? Like, is, is he's the starter, but he's not going. It's still going to be a full blown committee. He might get first dibs, and so that will be better for him. You know, more opportunity. But it's no one here is getting the Kareem Hunt treatment of you're the dude in this offense. I, I feel like the the entire Chiefs offense. There should only be two players with names on the back of the jerseys." <laughs> It should be Mahomes and Kelsey. Oh, Everybody oh. else, and that's not an insult. That's a compliment to the team. It's it's a horrible insult for the fantasy world. But they don't treat this team with Tyreek gone. You know, they've had more big plays this year than when they had Tyreek. 
like big plays down the field. It's just you just swap in wide receivers, swap in running backs, score a million points. It's it's actually really impressive. It is. Uh, wide receiver duds. Debo, seven targets, five for 42, one rushing attempt. You know, with the CMC news, I don't know. Did we talk about Debo? We didn't really talk about the effects that it would have on any of the other 49er non-running back uh, players. So what is the, what, what do we expect? that? To, I mean, the rushing attempts for Debo Samuel have to be not happening as often. Yeah, I would assume that they're going to use him more as a traditional wide receiver. When Debo has really gone heavily up in the run game, it's usually been due to injury. You know, we saw it last year when Elijah Mitchell went down. Debo was more involved. We saw it this year. Um, now with Christian McCaffrey there, they'll still hand the ball to Debo a couple times a game, but it's not he's not getting eight carries again. But for fantasy purposes, you you can make a really strong argument that it should be better for him to be catching the yes. ball out wide as opposed to taking handoffs. If he was going to touch the ball 10 times a game, you would want 10 receptions over 10 handoffs easily. The hard part for me is that McCaffrey will be really involved in the passing game. He True. will. You're so just hoping some that the amount offense of... is better. But the, the last month, this it's trended this way. You Before this past week where Samuel had the one carry, it was two for three straight weeks. They've kind of phased him out of that. But it's been kind of like when you talk about draft picks, Debo has been disappointing, no? I mean, this yes, is. Very. I mean, he's had two weeks inside the top 21. Yes. I mean, I guess on the year he's still inside the top 12, but it's just not been as explosive. Keenan, two targets, two catches. Didn't play in the second half and now says goodbye for a week. The other uh, long suffering target in Atlanta. Yeah. Drake London, one catch. On one target. Drake, Drake good, London. 100% catch rate. Good. That's pretty good. 75, 59, 49, 78. That's the ranking of Drake London. I saw a lot of people on Twitter. They want to know if you can just drop him in a redraft league. I mean, I I, I suppose. You I can. mean, I'd rather have Mooney. Yeah. I'd rather have Mooney than Drake fair. London right now. It's so baffling for this, like, the people who are in charge of the Falcons, right? They weren't in charge at the draft. And if you knew what your plan was for your offense and for your team, why are you spending a top 10 pick on a wide receiver that you're not going to throw the ball to? It is Yeah, A.J. So Green bizarre. could do this. Like, yeah, anybody could do this. I mean, Drake London, I, I think we know from the first few games of the season where he actually got targets, he is a he's a good player. He can be an ascending superstar in this league. But why draft that player? Like, fix a different position. You know, get an edge rusher. I don't get a cornerback. Why spend a top ten pick? This is is an egregious use of your draft picks if this is your plan if this is your true plan. Cortland Sutton has been rough. Yeah. Three straight weeks. He went three for twenty three. He's been the wide receiver thirty, seventy, and sixty five. Nine targets. The trust is uh it's fading a little bit with Cortland Sutton. Sure. The depreciation of the offense as a whole. There there have been rumors about Jerry Judy being traded. Oh, my gosh. A lot of rumors. That would be... I think I think he's he's in my top three most likely players to get traded. Play, uh, teams are calling them uh, about trading for Jerry Judy. I don't know that the Broncos are really entertaining that or not. Okay. That's throwing in the towel. It would be. What's his uh, contract situation? Kyle, do you know he has one more year left? Okay, and they get they can pick up his fifth year. See that that's the part where I wasn't sure if there's a financial incentive to not have to negotiate a longer term deal with him if they're not believers. Uh, yet he out targeted Sutton. Now, one thing for this offense to note is that Sutton had the same amount of targets as Greg Dulcich this week. Sure. So his his uh, him coming back to the offense is going to be interesting on the target distribution. You just need better targets. Because if, if if you're a good wide receiver and you're getting nine targets, you would hope for more than three for 23. But Did you say they put in an offer on CMC? The Broncos did? Yeah, they were one of the teams that put in an, uh, It was a low ball offer, but they did. You know, the, the compensation, it was massive. And they came out and talked about San Francisco was like, uh, they were legit afraid of the Rams in division. Yeah. Like, that was the perfect situation for 
for Carolina. Carolina. Yeah. You know, what's funny is that... To the, get them onto the winning path. The last two teams that Carolina played were those two teams. The teams that were going the hardest after CMC had just played them and been like, oh, man. I like that guy. That guy's really good. Let's put him <laughs> on our team. Breaking news. Oh, I don't know what this yeah, is, this but... it's not good. I, can't be It's good. not good. No, it actually is good. <gasps> Yay! Pete Carroll... Says they got a really good report on DK Metcalf. He does not need surgery. Okay. It's a patellar tendon injury that may have been an older injury. Unclear on timeline. But Metcalf is determined to practice Wednesday, but not sure it will happen. So if he wants to practice, that's a good place to be in terms of how you feel. Nice. Okay. That's, so it is well, good news. Look, yeah, on, okay. on this particular Monday, we will take that. Oh, yeah. I mean, a breaking news drop. I am terrified yeah, I thought of it was breaking news drops. Tear. Do we need to add a little bit of like nuance to the different drops? Like, <laughs> yeah. does it? Do we need like a some good breaking news? <laughs> I, don't, I like the the mystery. I like the suspense. <laughs> uh, bad games for Brandon Cooks, Deontay Johnson, Robert Woods hasn't been the guy uh, at all since the injury to uh, Traylon Burks, and then Alec Pierce just three for thirty seven this week. You know, he's the downfield guy, and if you're dumping the ball off exactly. 16, 18 times, yep. troubling. Yep. So basically look at the pass rush of the opponent, and if they've got a, if they've got a yeah. pass rush that can get to the quarterback, that's when you move away from the deep field targets like Alec Pierce. I got another touchdown taken away from me from Rashad Bateman, too. He was dragged down on the one-inch line, four for 42, not a great return. It was weird. You watched this game, and it seemed like Lamar was holding the ball too long, yeah. dancing yes, around, it did. and I think he was just staring at Rashad Bateman. So I don't know if that's a good sign moving forward or what. It, it, he I, wanted to throw it to him down the field. That was an interesting point because I, I had the same uh, takeaway. I'm watching Lamar. I'm like, He's getting why, sacked. Are you, why are you running? I know. Like, where? What happened to that Lamar that we've seen all year? That was It was strange. And the Goose Crew, Romeo Dobbs, Michael Gallup. Oh, the Goose. Ah, oh, yeah. Ah, those guys. Ah, ah. I had both of them. Great job, fellas. <laughs> you should, you know, I, I told you all week, if you remember, drop Gallup, pick up McCall Hardman, and play him. I've mm, been saying it. You were yeah. saying it and Time saying and it. time again. Yeah. Brooks, you heard me, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, anything else we need to update the uh, listenership with, Kyle? Nothing right now. Can you do All anything right. about these pass attempts from Mariota? Can we get Desmond Ritter? Are they going to give up on this plan? Kyle, he threw the ball 33 times in week one. That's okay. I'll take 33. This is the plan. You yeah. are the closest thing I, I can come to yelling at Arthur himself. <laughs> I, I will say this. Arthur has really genuinely stepped up in a big way when Matt Rule left and we were not yes, sure the void will be filled who the <laughs> worst coach is going to be that's out there Arthur's like hold my beer because I got this I mean it, it, it's on we saw it but it didn't feel as bad when it was Cordero getting the handoffs we're sure. like okay cool Cordero's relevant but when it's Caleb Huntley and Tyler Algier it feels even worse Algier got like 16 carries, and I mean he's he's getting work. And what's crazy is like they were down it's freaking goldfish three scores. Yeah, not not this isn't like oh you're you know there's a half to go and you're down ten. They're down 21, right. and they're like let's have a nice slow drive. Every play is the first play of the game to Arthur Smith. That's unbelievable. Well, we'll be back with a big waiver show tomorrow. Yep. Good luck in Monday Night Football. Thank whatever you. you need to have happen. Thank you. <laughs> See you tomorrow, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.